I believe the first song we did uh, well, that we'll actually be doing this evening is called Spring Fest. It's one of those little catchy tunes that has a simple melody and, oh, just down to about four chord changes. Something uh, like Breezin', but uh, a little different. But uh, it has that nice little melody that you catch real quick and you like to take for a nice little ride. And I, I built this song off of those, what we used to call ice cream changes. Just changes that are sweet, simple and sweet to the point. And you can uh, do a lot of things around these chord changes. Um, this is in the key of D. And it's based on a D to B minor to G to A. That, that uh, kind of uh, progression we call ice cream changes. Changes like that, they're very simple and they're very easy to take a solo around. So I just call them ice cream changes. And we have a little bridge sort of, but it's just based on the five seventh of the key of D and using a sus chord. <laughs> So those nice little simple changes. And I built a little melody around that. Of course, I'll be able to elaborate that a little better with a trio. So that's just a little taste of what this song is uh, built around for chord changes. It's called Spring Fest.
want to thank my fellow musician friends here, um, Mary Thonberg on drums and Anthony King on bass. Uh, that was our trio version of uh, Spring Fest. So right now we'll talk a little bit more about these chords, these inversions, and uh, what I was doing when I was soloing on, on this song and through the song. It's one of those... Uh, songs that um, just have a catchy little phrase very very few notes not a lot of notes and it's just based on the D scale and parts of uh, these different chords from D to B to G to A that's basically what I used and then altering to a sus chord and uh, on an A7 I'll use a sus and sometimes a G major 7. So other than that, it's really your triad D to B minor to G to A. And uh, for instance, So there you go, a one chord change to a six minor, to a four chord, to a five seven. That's basically um, the way I'm taking this song in this little cycle. Except when I get to the sus chord. <laughs> The sus chord, it, um, it's a way of giving you a different sound rather than just using a seventh chord. More uh, modern, more contemporary. In the early rock and roll days, they just used a lot of triads. You could hear it coming, but there wasn't um, a big variation until I got in like the... Uh, 80s or some writers of the 70s and now you know it's every day regardless of whether it's rock or not you hear the sus chords and in, in rock and in rock you'll hear uh, just for instance a D and they'll use the sus that a lot in uh, just rock you know and rock chord changes are just simple triads and your power chords but uh, in jazz it's used a lot more or other contemporary songs uh, I like to I like to use it in the right place for the right color that I want and uh, so I chose your um, a sus rather than an A seventh or an A triad. But in other places, I do have some triads in here. Just for instance, you can have a triad, but you can change the bass line. And that's why I have a G over an A. So I have an A on the bass line with a G triad on top. So, um, it's a way of getting a certain sound. On the solo, the notes are just coming from the D scale and some variations, but you have to think in terms, is it just the D scale? Well, you do not always start on the note or the first note of the scale, but you might start on whatever note that sounds the best for your solo out of the scale. So you have to think in terms of that 
And when I'm teaching a lot of young people, if I show them a scale that matches a chord, the first thing they start doing is playing this scale rather than thinking in terms of finding the melody within the notes of the scale. That's where it makes a big difference. You need to find the notes within the melody of the scale. And it could be more than that. Um, there are notes that um, you can take singularly or you can create melodies harmonizing the notes of your solo. For instance, uh, in the beginning, that's a part of D and a part of B minor at the same time. So I'm harmonizing there. And you can do the same thing in your solo. There's a lot of different solo technique. Um, you just need to listen to people that are doing what you like. And what you have to do is study what they're doing. And then find something simple enough that will help you to find a starting point. Because if a solo is too hard for you to even find the beginning, then you need to find a song that is not over your head, so to speak. Find songs and players that are playing something that give you a start-up point for examining the solo that they're taking and the technique they're using. Um, a lot of that is in the blues because a lot of the blues they're using uh, blues scales but a lot of people tell me well they play rock or they play blues and then when it gets to jazz uh, they're just locked out of it so to speak well that that's because we're going into a lot more chord changes and you need to know a lot more scales and you need to know a lot more technique in order to hang in there, so to speak. But um, the process of getting to this technique is in my book with samples, examples, and by watching what I'm doing from the TV show and getting into the breakdown of the technique I'm using. That's, that's a good way to start because it's not always on TV for you to get the same information the same way to get to the point of the next level of where you want to go with music. So this is um, a good way to get started with that same uh, technique and how to take a solo. Now, uh, when I talked about triads, I'm talking about the three notes that make up one of the simplest chords that's played every day. Uh, a D triad, you have a D scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. So in a triad, you take the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. And then I just double the first note again. So there is your D triad. Now, I said instead of an A7, I use an A sus. And one way to think of that is 3 going to 4 and taking the fifth note. If you had A7, you would have A C sharp, E, G. So in ta instead of taking the C sharp, we're going to take it up to a D and eliminate the third. So we have this sound. Instead of this sound. So we got the C sharp. We take it up to a D. So it's the fourth note. 
and that gives us a sus. So it's going to go to a resolution that goes like this. Here's your four to three. Resolve to a one chord. So that, that's the way you can think of a sus chord. It would be the fourth note in the chord that you want to play and you take out the third note you bring it up to the fourth and then you get that sus sound it's the same sound here here's your third bring it up to the fourth so here you go triad to a sus which is your fourth. And then it resolves back down to the third. Hopefully that's a good explanation uh, that you can utilize when you're thinking about it. But you have to keep in mind you need to know your scales. Because uh, without knowing your scales, you can go by ear. A lot of people do go by ear. But uh, knowledge goes a little further when you actually know when you're changing keys what would be that fourth note to give you the sus so uh, that's why i recommend learning a little bit more about music than going by ear a lot of people know how to get a sound but can they explain it to someone clearly about how you actually get it by knowing what notes you're using and what scales you're using. So there you go. There's that sound of the sus and it's like a four to three or eliminating the three and going to four. And the five chord usually resolves to a one chord or it can go to a four chord. And uh, a B minor is almost like a substitution for a D6. Depends upon how you want to use it. But these changes uh, that I chose are 1, 6, minor, 4, major, 7, 2, 5, A, sus. So see if um, you can apply these songs. If you're writing a song, take some of the same technique and write your own. Now, as I was saying, a 1 chord, in other words, there's a way of uh, talking about progressions in music. And um, at a certain point, most professional musicians will define it using Roman numerals. In other words, you can start in a certain key, uh, let's say D for instance, and then you have to take the scale. So you take the notes from the scale to make your first chord. And that's D. Then if you go to the four chord, that means that you go up the scale to the fourth note and then you actually make a chord out of the first note and then you form the rest of the notes. It can be a triad or a major seven. There, there are chord formulas in my book and you'll find ways to build chords. How do you build chords? Well, anyhow, um, one of the easiest ways to think of it is saying that the first chord is a one chord where is it going? It's going to a four chord, which you go up the scale and you take the fourth note in the scale and you make a chord from that. And then you go to the fifth note in the scale, which would be A, and you make an A chord. And then, as I said before, the sixth note would be B minor. So you take the B and you make a minor chord from that. Uh, Roman numerals uh, just help you to understand quickly the names of those chords so we can say a one chord a four chord and a five chord if you're in the key of D it's D G and A and if it's one six minor four five you would have D B minor G major and A major and if you alter it, you can have a sus chord or you can have that dominant seventh chord. 
So that's what we mean. Uh, what we're talking about is harmonizing the notes in the scale to make chords using a, a third step away from each note. Starting with the first note, you go to the third note, and you go to the fifth note. And that's basically um, the best understanding of how to harmonize the notes in the scale to make a chord. And uh, here comes a question from another viewer, uh, Lee. And Lee wants to know about what are the most important scales to learn for each of the following genres of music. Well, the first one, rock. Rock is um, one of those uh, types of music that there is more than one scale used in rock. One of the most popular scales used in rock is the minor pentatonic scale. Most rock musicians, that's the first thing they're using when they start taking a solo. Then you have the major pentatonic scale as well. And th those are the two most popular that's used in rock. Your minor pentatonic and your major pentatonic. Your minor pentatonic gives you the strongest sound out of those two scales and variations of that. Uh, blues, <laughs> well that's very simply put. The blues scale, the uh, minor and pentatonic scale, and the major pentatonic scale are most widely used in blues. But the blues scale comes first. Then after that, the minor pentatonic, in some cases, the major pentatonic scale. Now jazz is where it's never ending. You either use certain scales or you create scales from those different chords or within those different scales. And it's just a, a combination of uh, everything you can possibly think of depending upon what you want to sound like or who you want to sound like. So um, in jazz, that's, that's basically uh, my best way of explaining it. Um, so for instance, let's say rock chords are progressions that uh, series of chord progressions F A flat B flat C E flat F you can use the F minor pentatonic scale and solo off of all those chord changes that's one example blues I usually just uh, play um, 12 bars of a 1 chord to a 4 chord to a 5 chord. In that case, let's say it's in the key of E, it would be E to A to B. But it's the amount of bars you stay on E and A and B. There are examples in my book of the 12 bar blues. Jazz is just combinations of everything that fits whatever the sound or effect that you want to get. Just combinations. That's, it's no, no end to what you can do in jazz. So hopefully uh, that will answer some of um, the questions that um, Lee O'Dell wanted to know about and uh, hopefully he'll be watching listening and uh, give me some feedback tell me uh, does that help 
Well, I hope that uh, you've enjoyed uh, everything that we brought out today, and new songs, and uh, an examination of the songs, the technique that I use, and uh, those questions that our viewers ask. I hope that those uh, answers were helpful. And uh, we want you to keep looking, keep watching, keep listening, because we're definitely wanting to keep your interest to the highest level that we possibly can on the uh, George Walker's Music Variety Show and also from the website.